Well, you may not know her, but Baltimore's Virginia Hall played a role in the development of the Central Intelligence Agency. She was born in 1906. She grew up in the city and spent her summers at the family farm in Parkton. Yeah, and that upbringing helped shape her future as a spy. She ran an agent network in France during World War II, making her a target of the Nazis. There were even wanted posters for her capture. 11 News' Lisa Robinson tells the story of Virginia Hall. She described herself as being cantankerous and capricious, and her classmates described her as being the most original. A certain member of the class of 1924 at Roland Park Country School is as well known today as she was to the Baltimore School back then. She did things like wear a, a small garden, garden stake around her wrist as a bracelet and wore it to school. <laughs> And she always took the swashbuckling male roles in the play. That's the aunt Lorna Catling knew growing up. But to the Nazis during World War II, they put out an edict against her that says, La Dame qui boit, the limping lady, we must find and destroy her. That limping lady is Baltimore's Virginia Hall, fluent in five languages. Hall worked for the State Department in pre war Europe. An accident cut short her plan to become a diplomat. She and some friends went snipe hunting one day, and um, she somehow, climbing a fence, pulled the trigger and shot herself in the foot. Missing a leg back then meant no State Department posting abroad, but Hall found other ways to serve. She volunteered as an ambulance driver in France. Then the British Special Operations Executive recruited her. She was trained in how to live a cover. She was trained how to communicate clandestinely, how to use uh, a radio, mm -hmm. how to run, run an agent network, mm -hmm. uh, how to pick up surveillance, classic espionage tradecraft. One of those covers included posing as a newspaper reporter in 1941. That allowed Hall to help set up resistance networks in unoccupied France while documenting what she observed. But once the Nazis fully controlled France, she had to escape by hiking through the Pyrenees Mountains to get to Spain. She's going through the passes at about 7,500 feet. It's mid-November. It's up in the mountains. It's snowing. And she is doing this with a wooden prosthesis. CIA Museum Director Tony Hiley says Hall made it to London. The Nazi secret police, the Gestapo, was hunting her down, and the British thought Hall's cover was blown. So she joined the Office of Strategic Services, the forerunner of the CIA, to get back to action in France. The OSS made her, as I say, turned her into an old woman with the padded clothes and the white hair, and they sent her back. Since she had grown up on a farm here outside of, of Baltimore, she knew what it was like to live on a farm and live that cover as a milkmaid. And with that cover, Hall could count German troop movements, map out drop zones for military equipment and agents, and establish safe houses, all in preparation for the Allied D-Day invasion. She was also trained as a radio operator. This was extremely dangerous work because the Germans were always looking for wireless operators that they could capture, recruit, and turn back. For her efforts, that also included organizing sabotage movements against the Nazis. Hall earned the Distinguished Service Cross. She's the only female civilian to receive the honor during World War II. Hall's career continued, becoming one of the CIA's first female operations officers. To those at the agency, she leaves a lasting legacy. Virginia Hall felt herself to be an intelligence officer first, holding these stories close to us as CIA officers in 2015 help remind us of where we came as an agent as an agency and who our heroines and heroes were. Lisa Robinson, WBAL TV 11 News. And much of Virginia Hall's work after World War II remains classified. And the CIA can only say that she continued to support operations. Hall died back in 1982 at the age of 76 in Rockville.